previously on 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Seriously? Of course you can. Now get over here. Then I'm going to need your help. By the way, we were we were also lovers. We kissed us on a daily basis. If we don't do it right now, it's gonna look super weird. I mean, okay. Okay, me first. Me. And now back to the f is this? The f was that? The f are you? Ah! Hell! The sneak of B. Back with some more. 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. When we last left off, we completed Nenji's freaking storyline. And oh my God, it was fucking amazing. It had the most anime hype ending ever. He's like, all right, I'm going to do this for the girl I love. Here we go. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, I shipped them so hard. By the end of this, I swear to God, they, they better fuck, all right? Seriously, you survived the freaking apocalypse. You better fuck each other, all right? We're already na naked inside these robots. We're pretty much already halfway there. Come on! And yeah, I, I loved Ninji's storyline. I loved it so much. There was so much about it that was just like, like he was the perfect in, uh, protagonist for that kind of scenario, right? The scenario itself of the time loop was so engaging. And just like his, like trying to figure out how to get out of there, to find the key, the, the dreams that he had, like his realization that the world isn't real. Like it's just, it was so good. Fuck. And this dub is amazing. <laughs> this game's dub is fucking phenomenal. I got to give a huge like shout out though to Nenji's voice actor, um, who I actually don't know who it is off the top of my head, but uh, they did such a freaking great job with Nenji. Holy shit. Though, I mean, I can say the same for the entire cast of this game. It just, it, there's no dud here. Everyone just sounds great. The fact that this, again, I like, I got to go back then to what you guys were telling me before, how this dub almost didn't exist. The fact that they, it exists now and it it's done so well under the you know tight constrictions caused by covid it's like fuck man just all my respect but yes as i've said i am uh i am definitely in love with this game now yeah i've definitely hit that point now some people like well nikki you started loving this game the right from the start i mean you're right i was really enjoying from the start but i can't say like i was in love with the game because i just like i don't want to start saying that until i've like a good ways into it i'm at 47 percent through the the uh, remembrance shit and past halfway in destruction. I didn't, what, what we have episode 17 or something? Like, yeah, I now I feel pretty confident. Yeah, this game's pretty fucking amazing. Cause the thing about it, especially a game like this with so many different plot lines and seemingly in so many characters, it just feels like, you know, any moment this could completely crap the bed, right? Cause there's just so many things happening. It's like, good God. It seems like at some point, this shit's gonna just get really dumb, right? And make me just go, oh no, I'm just totally, totally takes me out of it. But goddamn, do they sell this shit in the best way possible, right? It feels like, at least right now, like everything seems to be following a set of rules that have been set in place and it, there's no like giant plot holes yet. Of course, I don't know the entire plot yet. So by the end, I might be like, well, there's a few things that don't really make any sense. But um, like, I don't feel like completely fucked over yet, right? Like I've reached a part where I'm like, ah, that was kind of dumb. And the fact that they can do that with so much happening in the game is impressive. The fact that they can make so many references and parodies of other science fiction without it feeling like contrived or like just like, oh, they just threw that shit in there for like giggles or fan service, but it doesn't add anything to the, the, the plot or make it interesting. No, it does. It's great, right? The Terminator references, the Evangelion references. Apparently there's some like Madoka shit with uh, Yakashiji or Sailor Moon or whatever. It's like they're put there to play on your expectations, right? And it's just how they managed to do that is so masterful. We're going to make you think this because, well, you've seen this before, right? No, you haven't, motherfucker. Yeah, you like, gotcha, bitch. Ah. Oh. Fuck, just going on about this game. But right now, let's uh, go on and talk about uh, Big Bang Sensei, uh, who last episode said, uh, Nenji, I may be nothing but a damn thug to others, but I'll make sure that girl can keep smiling. Majma, tell me like it is, son. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit, the parallels between Majma and Nenji. God damn. Okay, I mean, Nenji's not quite as crazy as Majma, but in terms of like doing what he, what he feels has got to be right for the, the girl he loves, 
at least in this instance too it's like kisaraki is also on the the same i would say same level like they're, they're both the same they're both pilots right of a of a sentinel unlike makoto and majima where majima was a fucking yakuza thug guy makoto's just like this nurse girl who is like it's kind of the reason why majima and her can never be together because they her life would always be at risk right which is sad tragic but at least in this instance no kisaragi and ninji they can do this shit they're gonna fuck inside their sentinels have sentinel sex it's gonna be amazing and i just love that man especially if they aren't the start of this how they were at the fucking each other's throats like i actually legitimately cannot wait to do more kisaragi just to see more interactions between her and ninji right because even by the time we see like ninji's side where he's inside the subway thing um seemingly they're already like pretty close right and we were seeing that that growth a little bit in kisaragi's but I want to see more. It's not enough. <laughs> but Big Big Sensei, thank you so much for your uh, incredibly accurate comparison. And it's for that reason you are comment of the day. But okay, so we've actually hit as far as I can get on destruction currently. Uh, by the way, I did off screen S rank these. Uh, it's funny how like once you've gone through it like the first time and you sort of understand how it works. You just the, go back the second time. Boom. Easy peasy. Like this one, I just went in there and good God, Ninji is unstoppable. You just put limiter removal on have him go around do demolisher blade even if it gets other people in his path he will kill everything in a single hit like that move is only supposed to hit one dude at a time but you just go -da 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 -da, just kills everybody it was crazy and then this one with the uh, uh the molars was a little bit tougher but i used uh uh takatoshi's uh tackle ability i just have him like run through the streets because those, those are really good for the the molar guys because they stick to the streets as well so he just has to just go, just fly, go basically go in a big circle around the city as he's just running through them uh, while keeping like long range shots and oh, and sentries. I had so many sentries and interceptors on the map. The guys would just like melt instantly. Um, so I, I managed to unlock a few more uh, bits of info, but I can't go any further until I do some more shoe stuff. But in the meantime, I go ahead and look up uh, the ones I unlocked. Uh, G molar, officially called giant molar, Th 35 meters tall, a massive, Kaiju with a both incredible weight and power. This Kaiju specializes in close course combat. It's the car that makes it hard to take down with range attacks like missiles and rapid guns. D series D800. A large surface ex Ooh, oh shit, we're getting into we're getting into some shit here. Large surface excavation unit developed by Shikishima Industries. It was built for the third phase of the terraforming project for the purpose of surface construction and modification. Built to withstand the extreme conditions of increased pressure and gravity, has an outer hull composed of specially treated metal with an increased melting point. Possesses three artificial legs that allow for autonomous mobilization to any excavation site. Able to perform up to 100 days of, 180 days of continuous operation. Ah, oh, shit. See, so at the top here, we have the, the Kaiju, you know, battle, battle name and capabilities of it. And then below, we have what it actually originally was. Not aliens from another planet, nope. Something made by Shikishima Industries to uh, help with terraforming. And I have a feeling that's we're gonna start getting that for all of these, I bet. I think it's actually might be the first one we've gotten so far that uh, actually labeled that. Um, all right, the Gladiators. First generation Sentinels from 2064 that were taken during the Kaiju invasion. They became deadly additions to the Kaiju forces. Or so it was thought. In actuality, to combat the Sentinels gaining power, these were newly developed kaiju based on the construction data of the first generation Sentinels. The destructive power is still intact, and they even come equipped with composite ceramic armor. Despite being prototypes, these enemies come with a durability to withstand low power attacks. Interesting, because they're prototypes, that's why it was only 300 damage instead of 500 damage, like the uh, original ceramic uh, composite armor. Um, I bet you were going to see versions of all these, right? For Gen 2, 3, and 4. I bet we're going to see a uh, kaiju version of all of them. And they're basically going to be like the, the heroes, right? If you were like referring to like Warcraft, uh, real-time strategy Warcraft, the heroes, the big beefy guys, the ones that have abilities that you gotta fucking watch out for. And then they don't just attack. Uh, shit. Ooh, goody. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna start seeing now uh, additional stuff to say what these things were before they were turned into or made into battlers. It's I think I actually knows too, you can actually see, holy fuck. So you see file number right up in the top. So this goes from 101 to 135 meaning that there's like 33 entries between here and here once this gets done so we're given an indication of how many more do i have left a lot 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 also i'm up to 61 mystery points now uh, oh i did actually unlock a few 
new uh, pilot abilities, including one I, 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 I locked for Yakashiji that I didn't actually look at last episode. Um, I still haven't looked at it. Uh, Hidden Girl Power. Um, after defending EP slightly recovers for boys and HP slightly recovers for girls. Ooh, that's cool. That I really actually adds to her, uh, her support kind of uh, capabilities. That's awesome. Wonder how much is slightly. <laughs> Again, I could. I kind of wish I had, you know, raw numbers here, but that's good. And I actually did unlock a couple twenty level twenty fives. Uh, Ryoko, don't underestimate me. EP slightly recovers when attacked. Oh, that's good. Yeah, actually, that is. Again, that has potential. The thing is, though, I'm, what I'm learning is like, unfortunately for the ones that are like, when your HP gets low, you get more attack or your defense goes up or whatever. At least if you're trying to get an S rank or do your best, you really don't want to get hit like at all. <laughs> like the, the goal is to not get hit because it really doesn't take long. It's at least on intense difficulty for enemies to just whittle you down or a, a terminal down. Like the last episode when I fought the, the gladiators, right? Like I had like 100% terminal defense, like the entire fight until like the last like just 10 seconds or something like just a whole bunch of flying dudes got in there and then just whittled that terminal down so fast and they had shields on them so i couldn't do anything to them um and fucking ninji uh now i'm mad <laughs> you're making me mad attack increases when hp decreases again good but i don't want my hp to go down so it really is just kind of like it's all about just zoning these dudes out you know making sure that if you're going through some dudes right that you have composite ceramic armor if you're gonna be surrounded by a bunch of little guys or make sure that you fucking kill them so you have no worries of them counterattacking. Um, anyway, everyone's over level 20 now at this point, so. Uh, I don't know if the max level is actually 30 or if we can just still go above that. I imagine you probably can keep going, but it won't get any more pilot skills beyond that, so. Oh, by the way, I've been, in the meantime, just enhancing uh, everybody's, like, skills. I'm really, again, not really doing stats. I've gotten, I think, everybody about to... Everyone's up to at least plus two. And a quite a few plus threes, plus fours. I don't think I've got anyone above plus four on abilities, though. Oh, wait, no, I got this one up to plus five. Mostly because this this move, anti-ground piercing rocket la uh, launchers, is really good. But the main issue with it is that it doesn't shoot very far. So I really had to up, I tried to upgrade just so I could get it to go further. But it is very good, especially just like because it's like the only like crowd control move that I found that actually pierces armor. But for the time being, I am completely locked off from this until I complete shoe stuff, which you know what that means. That's right. Let's go ahead and continue with fucking Kisaragi. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, man, I think it's probably time we head into shoe here and see what the fuck he's been doing this whole time. Yeah, we've we've not moved on since his prologue where he met the uh, the mysterious idol who I think based on what we've just seen from the fights where she's shown up briefly is clearly some kind of AI. I have also brought up again how I, I feel like we haven't seen shoe much at all really in other people's roots. I mean, a little bit, but not... I feel like as much as other characters. Shio Amaguchi woke up late at night from a mysterious dream and heard someone calling his name from the TV that he swore he turned off. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. You just finally get an ego. It's about damn time, you dickhead. What took you so long? <sighs> Man, I'm really off my game today. All these weird dreams must be getting to me. And that show that came on in the middle of the night. Wish that was just a dream. So yeah, he's having dreams just like Iori and Juro and Ryoko, right? And it's like dreams of previous life, another world line, however the hell this shit is working. But he's also on medication, just like all of them are, right? Wait, is Iori on medication? Actually, I'm sure Iori is. He, actually, I think just Shu, Juro, and Ryoko. But no, Iori was like doing something with Murray Mura and maybe mind transferal, but I don't know if she's on med any medication. Motorcycle key. My motorcycle's a Shikishima GRD 250. It's hot. I woke up late this morning, so I came to school by bike, but I've got it parked off in the shopping district. That way, the school can't get on my case about it. Yeah, I guess because they're not supposed to maybe ride around motorcycles, bad image for the school or something. But Yuki Inaba. Miyuki Inaba. She's a celebrity, a pop star. <laughs> Who'd believe me? Hey, so I've been talking to this pop star through my TV. Ugh. 
<laughs> yeah, no. No easy way to drop that bomb. They'd have me committed. That's right. Everyone in this game probably <laughs> should be committed at this point with how much fucking crazy shit happens. Uh, okay, so we got four choices. That dream. I actually wonder how long it'll take me to get to what I need to be like around the world in 30 something. Man, she's cute. A bombshell like that sending those curry guys to the hospital. Damn, so hot. All right. I don't see Karabe kun. I wanted to talk about my dream. Might be out in the passageway. It's Raggy! Oh, it's her. She's in 1B, same class as the Robin. <gasps> oh, God. She's not even my type, but I can't get her. It's just Amaguchi. Must be from all those dreams. She's in 1B, same class as Karab. Not even my type, but I can't get her out of my head. Must be. Wait, no, no. Oh, fuck. I fucked up. Go back. I just want to listen to what he said. I like how Miyuka freaked the fuck out. Whoa, hey, what? What's going on? Oh, it's just Amiguchi. What's up, ladies? I didn't offend you or anything, did I, Sawatari-san? Amiguchi-kun remembers my name. I'm gonna jerk off to this later. I remember Tomi-chan, too. Hey, girl. Why bother remembering me? <laughs> I never get a girl's name wrong. Uh... Miwako, what do you see in this guy? <laughs> Come on, let's go. Yeah! <laughs> oh my god. She obviously she's absolutely Sylvain's long lost son. I think we can all say that. All right, he doesn't know who his real father is. Let's be honest, Sylvain slept around enough, it wouldn't be surprising if he had an, you know, some illegitimate offspring somewhere. yuki -chan's supposed to be in class 1A. No sign of her, though. <sighs> Karabe kun might be waiting for me. I should get going. Huh? Oh! <gasps> Isn't that... Ichi and Miura, who was also Miura and Miura, I think. Hey, Miura kun. Amikuchi kun. Nice bot. What the hell are you doing to stand here so casually with BJ? You still on the run? I can't go home. Even if I could, it wouldn't solve anything. Look, you don't have to tell me any details if you don't want to. But what the but fuck is that? A pretty rough situation. Well, for what it's worth, you can crash at my place whenever you need to, okay? I owe you a debt of gratitude for all you've done. I'll be all right. I'm staying with an acquaintance now. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah? Juro? I hear it, man. So, uh, what is this thing? Uh... Well, this is... Don't forget your promise. It talks? Whoa! An RC robot? Hmm. That's crazy. Is it yours? Not exactly. I wonder how much he's telling Miura here. How connected are they, right? And we've learned that BJ is Miura, like, but like some AI Miura. So what's this Miura? Yeah. I feel like I had a dream about something like this. You were in it too, Mira Kun. Maybe that's your big secret, huh? You're some runaway hero from a ruined future, here to save us all. <laughs> My dreams are always somewhere in the future. But I feel like I know everyone I keep seeing in them. Well. Maybe I really am just dreaming. Makes more sense than them being premonitions. I don't know if that could really be our future anyway. Everything in them is way too crazy. 
Even that dream. Wait. Let's talk to the mirror some more. Eh, bad joke. Just been having some crazy dreams lately, I guess. Maybe I am from the future. Jeez. You didn't take me seriously, did you? Or the past. <clears throat> something. Anyway, if something big happens, you can always talk to me. Hope things start getting better for you soon, man. Okay, that's that line he said just suggests that, yeah, I think BJ is telling him about what, who he is and what happened, right? Thank you. Potentially. Hmm. Was that drone scouting for the kaiju? Hope they didn't find us. Kisaragi-san? There was this great cake shop on the first floor here. And they had this pear tart. It was amazing. And now, even my own apartment, it's all ruined. All gone. Hmm. Uh, when would this have taken place? Is this a different time than they saw their world destroyed? And maybe it is. I guess it would have to be, because this is very similar to what, you know, when she came here, but with Nenji, but she wasn't here at the time. Ryoko was here, and A was here for a bit. Oh, and also uh, Miwako. Hmm. Are you going to be okay? Sorry, just had to get that out. I got to stay strong. Come here, girl. <laughs> my, my voice is all scratchy from crying all day. You sound good to me. And scratchy or not, I'd still tune in to see you. Oh, damn. You're such a dork. Damn, this world I shoe it. It's, it's shoe X freaking Kisaragi. <laughs> damn. Let's try to get to the cross country road. We might see a rescue copter flying around or something. What, up there? The only things flying around are the weird bug things. Nobody's here to help us. Even online, nothing's getting updated. There's no way we're getting rescued. I mean... I think it's like this around the whole world. Those things erased everybody. Like how everyone in the city just vanished at once. I saw it happen. I bet mom and dad were... That's the part I don't get. Whatever these big killer alien things are, they've clearly got us way outclassed in tech. They can wipe out whole crowds without a beam or anything. Was that really their doing though? Or was that like the doing of like, uh, Chihiro or something? Cause she apparently had the ability to transport everybody out of there to let people fight, right? I don't know, I guess it depends on their sentinels running around here. And still with all that power, they come here in this gigantic horde. They dig these holes all over town, and then they just stop. No carnage. They're just sitting there. Like they're waiting for something. Huh. And us, we didn't get killed or vanish or anything. There's got to be a reason for that, too. How are you still this calm? It's crazy that you can still keep it together, even with all this stuff. I, I, I'm really not. Trust me, I'm freaking out too. <gasps> Look out! What? I got you, girl. You okay? Look, it was just a building collapsing over there. They didn't find us. Yeah. <laughs> what? Huh? Uh, well... Everybody falls for fucking shoe. You really changed. Back in middle school, you were a total nerd. Glasses and all. Now you're so hot! It just makes me wonder. Why do you make such a big change to your image? Uh, oh, uh, well, funny story. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Because he, because Tetsuya Ida's 
right kind of that nerdy look, right? I was listening to one of your streams, and you said you'd kind of go for tough guys. Cool guys. That's basically it. What? Oh, that's it? That's why you started trying to be such a badass? <laughs> I guess I got the look down, but I couldn't walk the walk, huh? Damn, some music, man. Come on. Seriously, this isn't the time for jokes. You were already popular enough back then. Why would you go that far just because I said... Well, you know fate? As in the letter F and number 8? What? That's... Actually, my username. What? All this time that's been you? Hey, it's not like I was keeping it a secret. I only got so far because of him. That's why I started getting serious about my singing. Because he supported me. Told me I was a great singer. Well, you are a great singer. And I, um... I guess I always sort of had feelings for... Oh, shit. Over here! <gasps> oh, God, I thought Ninja was supposed to come out and be like, What the fuck are you doing? She always smack him in the face. Interesting. We're getting kind of more of a look here at, uh... Keith Rager talking about her, like, making videos and stuff. We didn't really get a much of a look at that in the other routes. Though that was, like, discussed in her profile, and I was like, what's the significance of it? I can't believe it. There were other survivors. We came to rescue you. Morimura-san, they're over here! My name is Keitaro Miura. What about you two? I'm Tomi Kisaragi. I'm uh, the drone family uh, to them. Uh, uh, he didn't say it. He was not going to say Shu Amaguchi, was he? He was going to say Tetsuya Ida. Now, who are you? Me? Oh. I'm Tetsuya Ida. Oh, there it is. There it is. No, this is this is te this is Tetsuya Ida before he becomes Shu Amaguchi. Which I guess was his new identity given to him maybe as well after the the infection incident. So clearly this is going to take place before that, right? Let's check the event archives here. Holy shit. Very, this is actually quite early. My name is Tetsuya Ida. So does this take place? Yes, it takes place before oh, the Wish and Trusted where he he leaves and then arrives. Uh, so yeah, 16 years in the past. So this is like around when where Juro Izumi is, right? This is actually before. Whoa, no, this is actually just before he gets fucking shot, right? Wait, but this is in 2025, and this is in 2065. And this occurs before this? At what point do they hop 40 years into the future again and then get shot to fuck? And there's no event in between these two. Unless this is like a completely different... Because even at this one, he's with Yori and Yakashichi. We didn't even see them here. I figured there'd be some connections, but maybe this is like a totally different world line or something like they're not connected at all oh fuck it doesn't show up in his thing because he it's tetsuya ida not fucking shu amaguchi so it doesn't even show up here even though it says protagonist my name is shu amaguchi <laughs> he says shoot pure shu amaguchi but it doesn't show up here those bastards i don't know maybe it's done in this way because this is like this specific loop or something right that's another reason why they're not showing it i guess hell this lungness is transmission doesn't show up under miuras right no. The mirror starts at Sentinel Pilot Cadets. I think it is. I think it's done this way specifically for like a reason like that, right? Which is why like things with like Juro here don't show up. Which is kind of like, again, why I wish I had like a different tab for specifically those events, you know? To like sort those out. But I guess I could just say, well, it's all this shit that happened before a certain moment. Actually, funny, I thought I was going to stop there before he got a chance to say it. And it's like, no, what was they say? Oh, that's right. Tetsuya Ida. Yeah. So like, this is in 2104. This is in 2025. And then 26, like, Jesus Christ, they're jumping all over the fucking place. If this is, assuming this is the same Murray Mura as the one that just showed up here, which it looks like is the case. Okay, so from the future is right here, right in the dead center. And this takes place after, right after Yukakashi shoots Ren Yagoto, um, Talking Cat. So Miura has moved in by this point, right? Uh, Minami's gone by this point as well. Uh, yep. Tetsuya Ida. Here we go. Uh, back when he was a student, he supported Tomi Kisaragi on her singing live streams under the screen name F8. 
He used to wear glasses and came off as a studious, serious young man, but he tried to act cooler in high school to catch Kisaragi's attention. I think that's specifically this guy, right? This version. This is actually the older version of the, sh the Shu Amaguchi, the Tetsuya that we just saw, right? He's going to grow up to be that guy, just like how we saw in that one timeline where we had the specific Juro and Jihiro slash Yori growing up to be crazy Juro Izumi and the biker chick Chihiro, right? I believe. All right, that's the only thing I was added here. Or updated. Okay, so I, his is cross the world in 30 kilometers. That's the one I got I to gotta do. All right, so keep it going then. Yo. Yeah! Man, I'm really off my game today. All these weird dreams. All right, that's all the same. Um, back in my dream, he called himself Tetsuya Ida. We look identical, but that's not my name. So, hmm. it's weird. I keep seeing Kisaragi in my dreams, except it's not exactly me. My name's Ida there. Just two people struggling to survive. Wonder if they're in love. Wonder if I got a chance. This dream's probably way, way off in the future. Or the past. It looked like it was in some kind of lab. Never figured she'd turn up. But that was her, Tomi Kisaragi. In that timeline. It was not an NGX Kisaragi. My... No. Blasphemy, I say. Uh, okay, so I do have that dream. So may I show it to uh oh fuck oh it's you yeah show it to her uh, what she's the same just like the kisaragi i saw in my dream did you say something <laughs> yo i had a dream about you girl we shook up gotta make sure Ow. Do you think you can do anything you want just because you're popular? Look, I mean, I had this dream last night. What the fuck did he do? Did he like feel her up or something? Or give her a hug? I just had to make sure you actually had a belly. I'm sorry. What? Now you're calling me fat? What the hell is your problem? What are you doing, Shu? How is that okay? Do you think you can just go around grabbing girls? Oh, uh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you dumbass. I saw her hanging there. Or half of her at any rate. Her belly? What? <laughs> Gotta make sure you see her. You can just ask her something. like, nah, let me see. That belly? Yeah. Well, also, what? Maybe it really was just a messed up dream. I already know what Karabe-kun would say. I gotta lay off the splatter flicks. <sighs> Such a skis ball. What's with this guy? Way to go, Shu. What the fuck? Why was that? Why did, is that the way you decided to go about this, huh? Also, what? She doesn't have a belly? What are you even talking about? Yuki-chan's supposed to be in class 1A. No sign of her, though. T touch Kisaragi, touch. Creepy. <sighs> Karabe kun might be waiting for me. Uh, okay. Can I? Get going. Just gonna. Nope. Okay. Meet Fuyasaka in the passageway. Oh. Hey, Fuyusaka. You the only one here? Hi, Amiguchi-kun. Karabe-kun's not here, huh? I had this dream. It's bugging me. I kind of wanted to talk about it. How about you, Amiguchi-kun? Yeah, my dreams have been crazy lately, too. Do you see robots, too? Oh, yeah. No. Well... Okay, sure, yeah, they're kind of like robots. What kind of robots? 
Well, they were more like androids. Ooh. I mean, you couldn't tell them apart from human beings. Oh. And I'm there in some kind of lab with all these androids. Oh. I know that place. Is he making it or I was there making them? In my dream. The sixth biggest underground laboratory in Shikishima. Or something. That place is underground? And I saw Usami-chan there too. Tomi Kisaragi. Yeah, me too. It's got to be the same place. Amiguchi-kun, please. Tell me more about your dream. My dream. Okay. So... Hmm. Whoa! Oh, God! And that should work okay. Oh, is this why he was feeling to me? Was he like... I thought it was a reference to the other one he had. The other uh, dream or something he had, right? But maybe it was referencing this one, where he's making this one, this Tomi Kisaragi with convenience, convenient hair censorship. Memory data is now ready. <laughs> Damn, I, I'm adults, you yeah! Kisaragi, you got the legs. Tamao Karabe. Thank you, Tamao son. I really don't know what I'd do without you. Don't worry, Ida Kun. You succeeded with me. I'm sure you'll do fine with her. Oh, okay. The Tamao Karabe, who also gets made into a robot at some point. I'm sorry I had to prioritize her. Don't worry. We'll get you a body too. Soon. I'm looking forward to it. I think we might actually start seeing the, uh, the, uh, maybe the origins of, uh, What's his name? 426, yeah. Let's begin. Initializing composition. Beep boop, beep boop! The simulated personality and memories have been synchronized. Please, come back to me. Oh. Oh. Tommy, do you recognize me? Oh, oh, I see. He would. This is why there's a Tomi Kisaragi robot specifically, because she or Tenya Tetsuya Ida was in love with her, and maybe she died or something. Uh, Ida Kun. Uh, wait, are you his older brother? No. Nope. Did he even have a brother? It is you. You look so grown up. Freaky. I'm sorry it took so long. It took eight years, even with the technology underground. Hmm? Uh oh. I, I can't move. Don't look down, by the way. She's having trouble understanding her situation. I will inhibit her emotions to avoid a panic attack. Probably uh, should have given her legs first. Please listen. Try to stay calm. I analyzed your data from the records in Sector Zero. <gasps> Sector Zero? I found data for your old memories, your mind. And now I've transferred them into an android body. You mean I'm... I'm not... human? Am... I... Tamao-san, please turn up the sensitivity on those inhibitors. Kisaragi-san. You're like me now. An AI based on memory data. We are fucking gods now! <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You are constructed to think and act just like her. To be Tomi Kisaragi. You're still you. Uh. Let me try to calm her directly. Could you connect us? Do what you can. Please. I think this is going to be like, this is the origin of how this Tomi Hisaragi android was created, right? But at some point, she gets hijacked by 426. I don't think this is 426. Like, it's basically Tomi Hisaragi. I think that's somebody else. I think they even said that 
you hijacked an android, right? So we still haven't exactly seen where he's come from yet. We've got a problem with the Sentinels, Itakun. Damn, Titty Sama. The Sentinels we thought were complete aren't responding. The Sentinels are working off of the same code base as the D series. So it has to be the decode control holding them back. If we want to disrupt that function, well, we need someone compatible to maintain direct access. Something wrong? No. Is this a bad time? No, everything's fine now. She's calmed down. Really? What happened to the real me? Well... Please, be honest. Juro killed you. Oh! You and the other kids. Oh! Fuck! This is after that shooting incident. I don't think we saw her there with them. Like, it was Yakashiji Iori. Unless she was lying on the ground and I didn't see her. Like, she was already shot. But that's... Oh, shit. Okay, so this takes place shortly. Well, sh not shortly. It's been a... It's been quite a few years. Shu survived. Didn't he hop back in time though to, to Sumire Bridge and meet with uh, that Iori? I, I, I think he did. This must be right after that maybe. So like after that event of he's like, I hop back in time, I'm Tetsuya Ida, met Iori on the bridge, and then eight years he spent working on this. And now she's also eight years older, M maybe. And I put him down. Supposedly, I think 426 is going to be that jury to me like that AI specifically or well no well damn it he he got made into an AI or something right so I think 426 will is that that Juro that was supposedly shot maybe he backed up his mind into something I don't know that dream again man what time is it no way I'm getting back to sleep after that so in that dream, my name's Tetsuya Ida. It looks like it takes place in the future. And Fuyusaka's apparently been seeing stuff in the same place. And her tits are huge! Huh. I've been seeing things through Tetsuya Ida's eyes. But Fuyusaka... Actually, now that I think about it... The Ms. Morimura in my dreams looks pretty familiar. She kind of reminds me of Fuyusaka. Yeah, that's what she said. I had that same dream. Hmm. Um, you in there? I'm not coming out today. Hello. Nothing to see here. Just a guy talking to his TV. Okay, maybe I'm just going nuts. No, you're not. I'm glad you talked to me. Ah! There you are. What is going on? From the sounds of things, this might still take a while. Are you the real Miyuki Inaba? Or something else just wearing her face? There's only one Miyuki Inaba in the world. But whether this face is just a mask, it's hard to say. Sometimes a mask is all an idol has. Sometimes it's all they are. I know this is a normal TV set. It doesn't even do video phone stuff. Pretty sure I shouldn't be able to talk to someone through it. Hmm. I'm starting to think this might actually be Tomi Kisaragi's AI. Like this is actually Tomi Kisaragi when she gets older, what she would have looked like when she was older. I think I might actually recognize Morgana's voice actress there. I was like, the voice sounds a little familiar. It sounds a little bit like, like Kisaragi as well. And she was also talking about how she was, she liked singing, right? How she was making videos of her like singing and stuff. But why and how is she here like this? She made by Tetsuya Ida as well. You yourself are the transmitter. The TV is just the receiver. I'm, 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Morgana's voice actress. This is the only way I can communicate with you. I was blocked by Universal Control. By Universal Studios. The system denied me access. So I had to sneak in on this broadcast. Kind of over my head, but I guess the point is... <laughs> I don't know what you're talking you about. the airwaves, and that's how we're talking. You could say that. Why me, though? You're the only one I can find. More accurately, your ID is the only one I could locate. But even beyond that, I know I can depend on you. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like there's that that connection of like, yeah, she knows because maybe he was the one that made her, right? Okay, Future Becca, version. You said something would take a while. What were you talking about? It will take a while to help you understand. Understand what? Our situation. <gasps> I'm being tracked. I'm cutting the connection for now. <sighs> Trings, you up and get you locked. Yeah, locked myself. Yeah. <laughs> Had to see the exterminator. Was she being tracked by 426 or something? Uh, after a dream where he revived Tomi Kisaragi as an AI in the future, Shimagashi realized that Chiromi Uramura from his dream resembled Iori Fuyasaka. Let's go. Let's go. We're just getting started. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, the Tamau Android. Lord knows I got a f fucking mystery points. It'll last me a while. Uh, an android that looks like Tamau Karabe. It was developed by Tetsuya Ida, and Tamau's memories were transplanted into it. Ah, okay. During the battle against the Tomi Kisaragi android, 426 1985, Tamau's body's taken over by 426. Funny when I actually see, like, Tamau Karabe or anything in the image, or even an android. Tetsuya Ida. He was in love with the deceased Kisaragi, so in order to revive her, he developed androids at Shikishima Industries in 2100. He transplanted the past cat Kisaragi into Maokurabes into android. Uh, AI into androids. Laboratory. The Cybernetic Organism Development Room in Shikishima Tech Lab number six. This is actually where, um, yeah, this is actually where we saw A at one point, and also the Tomi Kisaragi android likely already taken over by 426. They were already all be they were all beat up too. They were just like she was missing part of her leg. Uh, cybernetic Organism Development Room in Shikishima Lab Number Six is located six levels underground in the year 2100. This is an experimental facility where everything but the brain was replaced by artificial objects in the human body. Tetsuya Ida was developing a way to turn humans into androids. Although Sector One was destroyed by the Kaiju invasion in 2104, this laboratory remained unharmed, har unharmed since it was underground. Okay, so Sector 1, right, is the 2104 slash 2105 era. Right, so here's the Relentless, relentless Nightmare. Uh, so where everyone gets shot to shit. I'm guessing up to this point, he's already maybe killed Kisaragi. And then down here, 2100, well, 2100. So at least potentially where, like, I can't tell. It's hard for me to know if this Tetsuya Ida is the same as this one or Shiomaguchi, right? Where he hops in the robot, goes to the past, meets with Sum and meets the Sumeria Bridge in 2189. Well, no, it didn't even go to the past. He goes to the. It says 16 years in the past, but he's in 1985. What? I don't know, man. That is confusing. But that's the same thing we had before, right? Didn't we see that same thing with 16 years exactly when they were hopping to Sector Zero? Yeah, it is. This was 16 years. With Jiro Izumi. Jiro Izumi. So it's, it's like Sector Zero always like 2189 at this exact point every time. It's always that 16 years ago or something, or it's always exactly 16 years. But it seems like, again, it went back to 2089. It's like the same thing, right? She was on the bridge. They ran to each other again. Uh, ran to her, wait, why? If he went back in time, then why didn't he run to Juro Izumi? He was on the bridge too with Iori here, right? This was like the same scene, I think, but did Juro not show up this time? And Shu like got there before maybe Juro showed up? Fuck, so confused. But then, okay, then after that, a few years, the League of Darkness thing, something, and then, yeah, so it's been 
11 years since that day. And he's been working in the Shikishima tech lab. This just follows up from everything else, which takes place right before we see Hijiyama. I think the first time in the future when he's steal stealing the, the jackets and stuff, which means whatever happens after this will happen a bit later, either there or way down here. Cause we have got already a lot of these events. Okay. Hey, look at that. We're at exactly 50% through all of the story in remembrance. Cool. Making progress. All right, well, let's uh, let's keep it going, because, again, I still have not reached the point where I've unlocked the battles again. <sighs> Man, I'm really off. Back in my dream. In my dream, her soul was in an android body. That's got to be the craziest feeling. What would it even be like? Not having a body of your own. More like I think probably more like her memories. Not about her soul. This, my, Yuki Inaba has been hijacking the airwaves. Also, she can talk to me through the TV. She knows me somehow. Not just that. She says I'm the only one she can depend on. It's like I would say that this. I'm still waiting for the punchline here. This Miyuki character is actually just Tomi, the Tomi android. But the thing is. We've already seen Tomi Android, right? They seem like they're separate entities. And so unless it's just like her AI and there's no real current body for Miyuki, right? She's just like an AI in the, the fucking ether. I see Tomi Kisaragi in there. Ah, oh, come on. What am I getting self-conscious for? It was just a dream. It's got nothing to do with anything I actually feel. But if I bump into her, things could get awkward fast. Yeah, so you feel her up again, you <sighs> fucking weirdo. What I really need now is a cold drink. Just gotta grab a drink, sit down, and chill out for a sec. Uh, Alright, let's go grab a drink. <sighs> could use a sugar boost. Yeah, a little pick-me-up should do it. <gasps> okay, no. Ah, it's a shit. <sighs> Love me a little fizz. Man, I needed that. Okay, let's think about this. What you buying, Akino? Yeah, I only really see this going one way. I tell someone and they dump me in a psych ward. So what can I do? Ah. Oh, God. Oh. Hey, Kurabe-kun. <laughs> what the fuck, Juro? Jur Where'd Akino go? I think we see, haven't we seen Akino around this same vending machine multiple times now? Is there something up with this thing? Where'd he go even? Is there like a secret lab or something inside this? I think this is the one vending machine I can't examine either. All the, I can always examine the, the these two on the right, but never the, this one. Hmm, I don't know. It is kind of suspicious. I'm pretty sure we've seen Akino there at least two, maybe even three times. Could we hang out again today? You got it. Let's see. Why don't we go to your place this time? Oh, this is going to be interesting. I think this might actually be the same scene that we saw before with uh, Juro asking Amaguchi to hang out. But now we're seeing it from Amaguchi's perspective, right? And this is when we didn't realize, you know, he, he thinks Kur Shiba's there. So this, this might be interesting. Don't you have the place to yourself right now? I want to check it out. It's true my grandma's away visiting relatives, but, well, right now... I have a guest staying over. Things are a little awkward, so uh, sorry. It's just not a good time. Well, all right. Let's go to my place then. Again. Thanks. I don't know. I think I think we've seen this conversation before, though. And then this is where they. He tells them about the 
the uh, oh it totally is he's coming to bring him a soda and then this is when juro tells him about the dream where he shoots up everybody i think right oh it is juro's standing there looking at so apparently he thinks she was playing the game even though he's not really there so he's just standing there looking at the controller like a fucking weirdo done already Sorry. Looks like all we've got is soda. I'm glad we finally got to see one of these scenes from somebody else's perspective. We because we never really got that, right? We never saw Sheba, that was kind of the indicator, but it was like we never got to see like Juro being a fucking weirdo here. You did say you wanted a drink, right? Thanks, Sonny Gucci Kun. It's getting dark. We should probably go get dinner soon. You're coming, right? My treat. You already paid for my ramen last time. I feel kind of bad. No, this is the same scene. Then what? You want to call it a day? I can still tag along. I'll just pay for my own food. This is actually... Yeah, oh, yeah, you actually see I could fast forward, too. Oh. This is if you hadn't figured it out by this point, too. This is another way you could have you could have pieced it together. It's so cool because I love that there's so many different ways that they that you can find out events, right, and important things. Like you could have played the thing with Juro and then hopped over to Shu and seen this scene and been like, "Where the fuck? Wait, this seems seems this scene seems familiar. Why is it playing out exactly like the other one? But I don't see Shiba anywhere. What the fuck?" You watch the video I lent you. Oh. Hey, you recommended it. How could I not? Did you already finish it? What did you think? Kind of a campy plot. You've got this mad scientist who loses his real body. So he builds a new body and sets out bent on revenge. It was interesting, but definitely not for casuals. <laughs> for a B-movie? Is that Tetsuya Ida getting a new body? Is that why the, the future Tetsuya Ida looks so different from this one? Did he like make a new body for himself and it looks like just completely different? It's like his hair color is not the same. Even his older version there we saw at the lab, still the same hair color as this guy, as Shu. Oh God. Shut that shit off. Maybe I could tell Karabe Kun about the TV stuff. He's one of the only people who might believe me. But how do I even bring it up? Don't want to get this wrong. I know if I don't make myself absolutely clear, I'll just come off as a crazy fanboy. Actually, maybe I better keep my mouth shut. Oh. What's up? Just learning something about you. I figured you were only really into Western music. Never thought you'd be into the idol scene. Yeah. Miyuki Inaba. She's been really getting big lately, hasn't she? Uh, oh, that. I mean, you know how it is. I just got curious. I'm getting hungry. Did you want to just grab dinner and go home? Actually, uh... Let me stay here. Do you think I could stay a little longer? I'd really appreciate it. My old man's probably at his mistress's place again. And I'm all by myself here. Stay as long as you want. Thanks. Say, uh... Any specific reason you don't want to go home? <sighs> well, anyhow. Want to get food? He doesn't want to go home because he's actually... He's had that dream of the shootout and he's afraid he's going to hurt Yakushiji, right? We could swing by the video store. It's part of the reason why he's been so cold to her. To watch. Oh, speaking of... Before I forget again, here you go. I, I think. I, I can't tell if it's that's like the only reason or if that's... Or just part of the reason why he's been so like 
frigid to her, right? And he's just like, oh, I'm so done with this girl. This one I brought with me. It's basically the sequel to that other sci-fi one. This story was meant for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. For you and me. Creepy. Oh, here we go. Transfer complete. Now, open your eyes, Juro. Uh oh. Or maybe the name four two six would be more appropriate. Ah, oh, there we fucking go. Is right. It fucking is. There we go. Here's the origin of four two six. It is. It was Juro Izumi. That jury is me brought back. Why did you bring him back, dude? He fucking killed everybody. And that really backfired. Do you recognize me? Tetsuya Ida. Or at least an older version of him. I see I was gone a long time. You always seem to notice that whenever I wake you up. <laughs> it's been three years since you died. Next year, we enter the 22nd century. Okay. Three years since he died? Wait, what? What? I thought he died after... Did he not die after Morimura shot him? Because that, that did not take place just three years ago. That was, like, 11 years ago. So he was around for, like, eight more years? Still alive? How do I look now? Oh, this is... No arms or legs, not even a face. You'll find the pain receptors are all still there, at least. So I'd really recommend you cooperate. Who? You are now an android. Your consciousness is stored on an electronic brain. So you pulled my data from Sector Zero. Brought me back as a ghost. I brought you back because we need to talk. Sector Zero again. You clearly did the most work on that underground supercomputer. So we're going to have a little chat about your research. Underground supercomputer, the UFO. What do you want to know? Creepy, dude. Let's talk about your final project. You were testing an unorthodox function for the inner loss here downloading memories into a human brain. Hmm. I'm picking up where you left off, so I'll need more details. Records say the memory transplant was a success, but all the raw data from the experiment was deleted. Why did you delete it? Did you hit some snag with the method? Okay, maybe you're still a little groggy. Let's wake you up. Uh-oh. Did you look? I really need to keep an eye on you. 
So that's your process. Copy me into this husk of tin. Then it wastes me once you have what you need. You're a dangerous man. Better get rid of you early this time. Can't afford the risk. Oh. Itakun. Uh oh. Is this where she, he's gonna hop into her? What's wrong? I found out from Mori Morrison. You're trying to transplant my mind, aren't you? You want to replace the Tomi Kisaragi of this world with me. Do you realize how horrifying that is? Hmm. I see. Take the memories and stuff of this Tomi Kisaragi in this android and now put it into a, a human body to the Tomi Kisaragi after jumping back, I guess, to Sector Zero. How could you? Wait, look. It'll mean you can be human again. It means you're going to sacrifice a living human girl. But she's you. It'll be your heart and mind going into your own body. What's wrong with that? <sighs> you know she's dead. The girl you're talking to. She's just a machine wearing Tomi Kisaragi's face. But your heart is real. You're still you. Don't you get it yet? The girl you knew will never come back. Even if... Even if you steal her body and transfer my mind. Please. Please, I... Without you, I'm... You know I love you. Oh. But... I can't support you. I can't support this. Uh, that explains why you woke me up. It sounds like things aren't going according to plan. Who's that? Prussia turned you uh, off. Well, I can tell you your biggest failure right now. Uh oh. Just standing right there. You should never have revived her as an android in the first place. All you had to do was transfer her mind into a flesh body. You could have gotten everything you want. Nobody the wiser. Shut up! Hoo-hoo! <laughs> Juro Izumi. You're Juro Izumi. Prisoner 426, aren't you? Oh. Prisoner 426. Okay. Yeah. So I guess he, after that of instant, he went to prison and then died? Was he executed or something? Why did you wake him up? Same reason he brought you back. We're both his means to an end. Tools to be used and thrown away. Why him? Just had some technical things I wanted to check. Don't worry. I'll erase him as soon as I'm done. Oh boy. I had a couple more questions, but we'll get to them another time. I noticed you kept Kisaragi's memory from before transplanting her into the android. Hmm? Paranoia getting to you. You didn't need to keep so many backups. Strange move for a man who sees humans as replaceable hardware. Shit. Or maybe you had the same contingency plan for her. You could erase her and start over as much as you wanted. Uh oh. I've heard enough. No need to get emotional. After all, me and your Kisaragi here, we're just data. All you have to do is reset us, and we spring to life. Just like you did to me. Ah. <sighs> You better shut him off, man. I'm erasing him now. Just keep your eyes on the console for me. Uh-oh. <sighs> That's right. Better watch carefully. Never know what might happen. Deleted. That should do it. 
You know he was just trying to mess with our heads. <sighs> Are you mad at me? <sighs> uh oh. Did he somehow already do it? <sighs> just by looking at her or something? Rut row. Data transmission had been remapped to the delete button. Oh, I guess he was too worked up to notice. Never thought I'd find an escape route planned out for me. Oh, fuck. And by one of my past selves, no less. So, how are you doing? <sighs> what happened? Hey, Kisaragi. Oh, shit. Has the view from the other side of that shell. A shame it might end up getting you deleted. And by the man you love, too. Oh, very classical tragedy. Easy, son. Sorry. But I need this body more than you do. Oh, fuck. That's how it happened. Oh, we're not even done yet. Holy shit. Wow. Fuck. Well, we finally got the answer to that. So it is. 426 is that juror Izumi. We got that hint towards it that from Ryoko earlier, right? When she was freaking out at Juro, like the memories he was getting. It does make me wonder then, how does... What happens to Hisaragi? What, how does she get injured, right? And what exactly happens to that Tetsuya Ida? Whoops. I must have fallen asleep watching a video. Looks like Karabe-kun went home. And the tape must have hit the end. It's automatically rewound. Uh, the dream just now. Man, that was fucking freaky though. Damn. That was that was pretty freaky. Just him just like that jury is me uh is uh kinda terrifying, isn't he? But I feel like even even his in his own twisted way, he's trying to try to save the world, right? He thinks he's doing what's best. Feels like it started off the end of the last one. So it sounds like the like the past version of Juro Izumi also set up that that out for him, right, to get him out of there. Like I don't think it was him that did it, right? The the delete was set the delete button was set up for the transmission thing. I don't know. By one of my past selves, is what he said. You saw the video. Hey. Man, I'm not even surprised anymore. <laughs> Are you still the same Shu Amiguchi? Yeah, I saw it. But what are you talking about? What you saw wasn't a video. Everything you saw was real. All events of the distant past. I thought that guy's voice sounded familiar. Wait, that happened in the past? You're still talking about that movie I watched, right? Okay, hold on. I borrowed that video from Karabe-kun. So let's assume you're telling the truth. What's Karabe-kun's part in it? Does he want me to see this stuff too? He's... Uh, he's the same as you. Watching the past unfold. Hmm. I think also Shiba is that juror Izumi as well, right? And I'm wondering if maybe the that's the one also giving him who gave him the video, right? Like pushed Juro to give him that video. I can't remember exactly. I might I might have to go back and watch the scene before and see if like was it Shiba that was like, oh hey, you should give uh the video to uh Shuya or something. Wait, you talk to him? When? We were just hanging out, playing games, watching movies. That's how it appears to you, yes. Oh. What? So Karabe-kun's watching the past, too. Is that what these weird dreams are? Yes. So, wait. All these dreams look pretty futuristic. You're saying they were in the past? 
Nani? I keep seeing that guy in my dreams. It's his past you're seeing. He resembles you greatly. His name is Tetsuya Ida. Okay, so now you've shown me all this crazy vision stuff. Now what? I have to find out what he's thinking. What he intends to do. If he's thinking of resetting the plan, then he has to be stopped. There's a plan? <laughs> what plan? Okay, so what's this plan? <sighs> Come on, what have you got cooking? This isn't going to be some big evil scheme, right? It's not. It's called Project Ark. Hey! The plan is meant to save humanity. As a species, you will all be moved to another planet. And whether you know it or not, this plan revolves around all of you. Hmm. I wonder if Project Ark then is actually this new plan, what's leading to this final battle, right? I kind of thought Project Ark was something that we've been doing over and over again. It was like the thing that happened at the very beginning of the game that set a lot of this into motion, potentially. Whoa. I don't know. I'm a Gucci, 50% done. Um, got a new mystery file and a few updated. Uh, let's check the events. So this is going to take place right before or after the other ones because it was basically from a different perspective, right? Cautious and body. We still got one in between, though, these two. May not necessarily be, have anything to do with Shu or Tetsuya Ida, but damn, that's this was a fucking awesome scene. This whole it was so like foreboding, right? You're just like, oh, fuck, because we knew like at some point he's going to take over that body. I wasn't sure if it was going to be that moment or not, but definitely was. Yeah, terrible dream. Yeah, just this same thing from a different perspective. And then Iba, Inaba's goal. I don't know, maybe we didn't actually see the moment where he hands that video to Shu. I'm not sure. I want to look at this, the original version of this scene again. We're leaving. Hold on, I'm almost done. Oh, funny, we didn't see that right there where he says we're leaving. I don't think. We could swing by the video store, pick up something new to watch. Oh, speaking of... Before I forget again, here you go. Okay, we did see Is that. that. A sequel to that sci-fi? All right, let's check it out. We can watch it together. I'm gonna have to pass. Oh, not in the mood for horror. That's not it. <sighs> Sorry, it's just I'm getting kind of. I keep having again. Oh, this actually happens totally different though. This part, that part actually happened totally different than the one he's we had. Unless it's supposed to be like, are we supposed to be assuming it's a different night? But a lot of the stuff there, like. He comments on the idol thing. I mean, they're, it was the same shit, right? So I wouldn't think so. Unless they're re completely repeating themselves. And even gave him the tape, so this is the, you know, the sequel to it. Actually, I think I know what it might be. We're seeing it from Shu's perspective here. Maybe Juro's perspective is thrown off there. Like, he's saying shit he doesn't realize he's saying, right? That's why he's, this is good for you and me, right? I mean, yeah. So you're like, all this shit's the same. We could swing by the video store. So we say this. Pick up something new to watch. Oh, speaking of, before I forget again, here you go. This one I brought with me. It's basically the sequel to that other sci-fi. This story was meant for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. For you and me. Yeah. It's like, it just happens a little bit differently. But does that mean he didn't tell Krabe or tell Shu about that dream? All right. Shu Amaguchi. The strange dreams that Umagachi that Amaguchi has been seeing were actually the past experiences of Tetsuya Ida, who look, looks near identical to him in order to, pr to protect Project Ark. Yuki Inaba expressed that she wants to learn his thoughts. Ooh, here we go, 426. His real name is Juro Izumi. He's already dead and currently exists as a replication that is based off of the memory information written onto Sector Zero. He had previously been researching ways to download memories from the inner Lassiter and how to get into the production line of the Daimos Code. He escaped confinement through transferring his own data into an android that looked like Tomoki Suragi. Damn. So cool. All right, the Kisaragi android. An android that looks like Tomoki Suragi, it was developed by Tetsuya Ida in 2100, soon after the AI of the past Kisaragi was transplanted into it. 426 ceased his chance to take over the android. Although this 
was destroyed during the battle against the Tamau Karabe android in 1985. Four two six managed to escape over the Tamau's android Tamau android's body. Four two six manages to take over the Tamau android's body, and now that same android is hanging out with fucking Yuki, and uh, it's a bit worrisome. It's like, oh god, Yuki, you're a danger. Okay, we still have not hit the the thing I need to get to. So maybe it's this one. Did you restore Tomiki's Saragi to his original body? Tetsuya Ida attempted to extract information from 426. 426 tricked him and took over Kisaraki instead. Cool. cool, yeah! This episode's all Amaguchi all the time. Man, I'm really off my... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in my... Well, it's not just our names. He and I are totally different people. In my dream, the way Miyuki and Abba tells it, those dreams weren't from the future like I thought they were. They already happened. It's all in the past. Past, future thing. My, the way she describes it, these aren't just dreams and videos Karabe Kun and I see. They're actual events that happened in the past. The past of Tetsuya Ida. I haven't seen much of Yuki in this room. Thought be, she would be hanging out with Yuki all the time. Get some of that ass. I see Tomiki Saragi in there. Okay, that's all the same. Hmm? <gasps> oh, speak of the devil! Yeah! I see Yuki chan. Capra ship for Yuki chan. Maybe Yuki chan's in the cafeteria. I should get going. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, Yuki chan. Yuki chan. Amiguchi. She's like, ah, oh, fuck, it's this nerd. I was just thinking about you. And now, here you are. Destiny sure wants us to be together. What the hell are you talking about? I'm saying you, me, behind the bleachers. Right now, let's go. So, Yuki-chan. Didn't I tell you not to call me that? You like Hey C? I heard vitamin C helps keep you healthy. I'm not drinking it for my health, dumbass. <laughs> not Chan used to drink it, that's all. Gotta lay off the smokes anyway. So, I need something else to focus on. Hmm. I see, that's why she's been so enamored with that. How about a date? No. <laughs> no. Come on, one date. <sighs> Pretty please. Come on, take you on my motorcycle. Look at the key. You know, I came by bike today. Got it hidden away nearby. We could go somewhere right now. No. <laughs> How about the beach? I know a place with a great view. I said no. One more time. <laughs> what? You don't have any place you want to go? A place from back in the day? Somewhere with good memories? <clears throat> Got a place on your mind? Or is there a reason you can't go back? Of course not. I just got to thinking. Reminded me of my grandma on my mom's side. Haven't seen her since my parents divorced. You don't say. <sighs> you set me up. Gotcha. Well, let's go. What? Let's go see your grandma. What are you, nuts? She's not even in the city. Her place is in Hamanashi, a whole prefecture over. <sighs> That's what I thought, dumbass. It's too far. No, let's do this. I want to go too. That's just about a hundred kilometers one way. Huh? Come on. Hey! This is the perfect chance to check something. After what I heard from the TV last night, I've got to find out. What? Shukun, let me tell you where you are. What do you mean? 
This is my house. That's not what I meant. Think bigger. I'm talking about everything you know. Hmm? Everything in this city. Everything you've lived. It's an isolated enclosure. Just 30 kilometers in diameter. What the fuck? Enclosure? Oh, this has got to be it. Around the world in 30 kilometers. But we still get news from all over the world. You're telling me we're closed off? No, that's too much. I don't buy it. That's a reasonable reaction. So, I think you should go take a look yourself. I'm going to unlock a part of the Suwabuki Bypass. You should now be able to see the truth. Huh. Go to the edge of the world. To the outer walls of the city itself. Whoa! What the hell? Hmm. Interesting. So, are these sectors actually within... Like little bubbles or something? Huh? You say something? Not on different planets like you I was thinking? Anything through on the Gucci? Or something? Hey, I can get us back within two hours. Home before sundown, easy. Easy peasy lemon fudgy! Don't worry about it. How about you tell me a little bit about your grandma? She's out in the boondocks. Nothing but rice patties. Yeah? Used to go to her place every summer. Walking between the fields in the mornings to do radio gymnastics with everyone. No kidding. I did the same thing in the countryside when I was a kid. In the afternoons, Grandma would give us some watermelon. We'd swim in the river and catch fish with our bare hands. Then we'd go catch cicadas off the old Selkova tree up on the hill behind the house. That's weird. What? My grandpa had a Selkova on the hill behind his house, too. We'd go catch cicadas off it. Oh, yeah? Uh. And the river, the watermelon. Oh. It sounds exactly like what I remember. Not that weird. Doesn't everyone remember the same stuff from vacations in the country? No, but that's exactly what is weird here. The hell? Oh. Well, we're almost 15 kilometers from the middle of the city. This tunnel should end around the prefecture line, so... What in the fuck? What the hell is this place? What's going on? This is what she was talking about. This sure doesn't look like a construction site. It just goes on forever, above and below. I can't even see the end. Yo, uh, where the hell are we? The outer walls. But what the hell is it? How do we get through? I don't know if there is a way through. What if all our memories from outside town are fake? What if everyone's been convinced that an outside even exists? The fuck? No way. I can't believe it either. We are in the Matrix! How could I? It'd mean this 30 kilometer enclosure, this isolated city. It's the only world we've ever known. Oh, fuck. Cross the world 30 kilometers. What in the dicks is going on here? So they're... What? So like stacked on top of each other or something? We said it was like, looks like it goes on infinitely. Are there like towns stacked on top of towns? So maybe it is. They're just like isolated areas based on different time periods. I'm starting to think that is going to start holding some water here, but maybe it's not actually on different planets. We're on the same planet, but they're actually like little bubbles for each town. 
Like, there isn't just, like, a whole world. I thought it was, like, the entire world was recreated, right? Like, I didn't think they went as far as having, like, a bubble thing. Because I didn't really see any indication that that was the, the case until this moment, honestly. Hmm. I was having some suspicions about that. That actual wor the wording of across the world in 30 kilometers. If that's... I was like, is that what that means? I didn't say anything because I didn't want to... I didn't want to actually spoil myself, honestly. The, na the name's a little spoilery. I kind of wish it... They called it something a little different. Um, okay. Let's see the event archives. Okay, so just purge right after this. Better date. So this was literally right after she was talking to him that night. About the... They're, they're inside of an enclosure. Meets with Yuki. They go to the outer walls. Okay. What we got now? Oh my god. Look at this shit. Residential District Dome. A giant dome with a diameter of 30 kilometers holds an urban structure with Ashitaba City as a, as a center. The world doesn't exist past 30 kilometer bound the 30 kilometer boundary. Nurse steps past the residential zone, gets false memories implanted, making them believe that the world continues on as normal. Whoever steps past the residential zone, they just immediately get like that shit jumped, like zapped into them. I'm almost wondering then if the men in black are just guys that are actually like overseeing the dome, like they're the ones hiding shit, like. Maybe if, like, uh, you know, someone comes crashing in, this is why this whole city is up in arms, right? It's like, oh, what the fuck is this robot doing here? They're, like, coming in and, like, hiding it. Maybe fixing the memories of the people who saw it. Like, they're basically the fixers. Maybe. Inside the wall. 50 kilometers away from the center of Ashitaba City. While in the city, the sky and land seem to go on forever, but 15 kilometers away from it, there's nothing but an endless view of a giant mesh-shaped pattern structure. In order to get Shu Amaguchi to go to these outer walls, Miyuki Inaba unlocked a part of the Su Suwabuki Bypass. Damn, son. Guess this unlocked destruction, right? Yep. I am just kind of curious to see what... Uh, many modified drum mod kaiju. Oh, fuck. And Tamao's Ohagi. Jama Mura on the team. Clear within 50 seconds. Can I still continue with Shu? I can. He's not locked off yet. He's going to have to start a new day, though. Okay, let's go ahead and do a fight then. Now I've just unlocked this shit again. Okay, so I need Hijiyama and Mura. All right, looks good. Got clear within 50 seconds as well. Let's go. I'm curious to see if maybe there's a reason why that was the particular scene they chose to lock this area off, right? But they're going to talk about it here. This is going to be good for actually for this one in particular. That's why they're pointing it out. These fucking bomb dudes. The EMP equipment on the first chance can get us some breathing room too. Though it tends to draw their attention instead of diverting it. It can be a risk. Yeah, it does. A true soldier faces his foes head on with pride. I couldn't ask a better chance at glory. Glory. All right, here we go. I said I'd give Shu the, the uh... Better put on a show, better put on a show for you, yeah. John. These flare torpedo and floating mine, just to sort of mix it up for him. Since everybody else already has, like, the missile move and shit and the interceptors. To see if maybe... I don't know. Maybe I'm, like... They didn't seem like they were super good, but maybe uh, they're better than I'm giving them credit for. Release a bunch of mines, so maybe, like... Like, if I just do it right here... Let's set a bunch of... Are we winning? So did he, like, set it in a line? Hold on, let me retry. I thought he, like, landed there. Is he... Moves to an area and deploys... No, it's, like... He does. He lands in a spot, and it's super weird, this move. Like, how is it set up? Like, let me see this shit. No, he does. He drops it in a line behind him. That's what it is. They really don't explain that move very well. How it works. Moves to target area and deploys. It should be saying like it deploys in a line behind him or something, right? Go ahead and set this uh, flare torpedo or something. See if that helps or does anything. Always think ahead. Act activate some interceptors. Boom! Oh, burn, dickheads! 
Hey, that's working pretty well. Yeah, get fucked. Okay, got a bunch of these over there. Here, a bulk. Actually, this is this is actually kind of interesting because this basically sets a nice path for him, right? I can, so I can float a bunch of ship around this and then it just does a bunch of damage to anyone who gets in the area. Like creating a shield. I believe. Yeah, so they get in the area and then boom, bitch. Like that. But once they trigger it, it's gone. Uh oh, we got a big thick bitch over there. All right, time to get uh, Takatoshi over here. Ah, going in. Fuck this guy up. Boom. Oh, God. Watch out. We got to... Ah. Uh... Oh, he fucking countered him. Sick. He got hit and went... Bah! It didn't even do enough damage to hurt him. I was like, oh, shit. I'm in trouble. Oh, wait. No, I'm not. I'm fine. Missile rain. Ah. Uh, it's a lot of missiles. Blah, things are happening. Eat this. Ah. Back attack this motherfucker. Still alive. Punch, punch, punch. I win, bitch. Oh, I definitely S rank to that shit. Good. Yeah, the, the mines and the uh, floating mines and other things like that actually do have good use for like just kind of for setup, basically, right? Oh, here we go. But the defense functions refuse to respond when the terminals are under kaiju attack. The mainframe would go down without even noticing it was compromised. So when it comes to the kaiju, the system's paralyzed? That's one way to put it. And Operation Aegis is about covering for that weakness. The Deimos attacks open up vulnerabilities so they can attack the terminals. We exploit those same vulnerabilities with some low-grade hacking to provoke the terminal's security. And trigger the defenses ourselves. The Aegis system activates, and the terminal locks out the Kaiju intrusion. If the threat of the Deimos is too subtle for detection, then we simply present a more obvious one. So, it's a ruse. Like sounding a fire alarm with no fire to get people bounding out of their bunks. Familiar shenanigans. Isn't that why they used to call you a no-account rascal? At any rate, that's why we can't activate it until the D-forces are close enough to the terminals. That's the last of them, right? Huh. Interesting. I'm wondering if all the different areas we're in, are we in different bubbles here? Potentially? Or is this all within the same bubble? Uh, Jersey only one took any damage. Uh oh yeah, baby, that's right. Drum mine. Boom boom. Okay, and to Mao's Ohagi. And more mystery points, because I don't have enough yet. Just don't have nearly enough. Okay, drum mine. Officially called blasting excavator. Kaiju with a body like a giant wheel. Once a target is required, it uses rocket engine to spin its wheels and close it on the target at high speed. Afterward, he uses the large amount of RTX-filled explosives inside itself to self-destruct. Uh, Tamao's Ohagi. Though they're lacking a bit of sugar, those these Ohagi that Tamao Karabe made for Katara Miura and Takatoshi Ijiyama are still soft, moist, and filled with red bean paste. They were given five each of, of each flavor. 
strained red bean, coarse red bean, and roasted soy flavor. Ah, uh, right, the, the food that you made for them before they headed out. Damn, I'm getting a lot of meta chips now. I wonder how high the level of this goes. Holy shit. Plus seven. There we go. Oh my god, plus eight. Okay. I just want to see. I was like, how high does this shit go? So, interceptor plus eight. At least eight units. Plus the hyper condenser. So, at least four more units. Not enough. God, it's a lot of fucking dudes. All right, guys. I think this is probably a good place to end things here for now. God damn, man. This game is just a fucking blast. Holy shit. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We definitely learned some, some good shit this time. Some really important stuff, especially about 426. Damn, that shit. That scene, man. That I'm still shook from how awesome that scene was. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and a favorite. It really does help me out. And subscribe for an already become Piggy Penguin. A boy, this LP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.